Hello, my name is Dan Grant, Haldex Tech Service Rep from Haldex Corporation. For this presentation, we're going to discuss the methods and practices of a Saba automatic brake adjuster. Okay, now we're going to discuss how to install a Haldex automatic brake adjuster. And in this case, uh, it's a Saba adjuster. The first thing you need to do is uh, the bracket you see here in front of you is what we call our smiley bracket. And the smiley part of it is facing towards uh, the floor of the trailer and ground is at 6 o'clock position. You go ahead and you secure it to the cam support uh, bushing and then you go ahead and install the first tolerance washer. Then you apply uh, uh, a lot of uh, anti-seize uh, to the camshaft splines and all the way around and coat them very well. And if for some reason you had to remove uh, the uh, clevis yoke, you should always put on the clevis yoke threads or on the push rod where the clevis yoke threads to an ample amount of uh, anti-seize so in the future that it doesn't weld itself to the push rod. Next thing you do is you verify the adjuster you pulled off and it was six inches on your new adjuster you measure that to make sure it's six inch the proper length and you put the brake adjuster onto the camshaft and there's always an arrow that shows the direction of applied and you install an outer washer next onto the spline shaft. Next we're going to uh, show you the clearance and per the TMC rec recommendation they recommend no more than a sixteenth of an inch in and out play and that's the reason why you put the spacers onto the camshaft. In this video, what you're seeing is the in and out play, the axial play, and the requirement is no more than 60 thousandths, and you can see the 60 thousandths goes in, and the 120 thousandths does not go in. And so by setting this clearance, it's per our TMC recommendation. Okay, so after you have uh, the adjuster uh, positioned on the camshaft with all the proper washers and that's what you're seeing here is a picture by shimming it by removing and putting uh, shims on there you're centering the arm of the uh, brake adjuster into the center of the clevis yoke and that's what you're doing and as the picture shows this was installed incorrectly so that you can see that you have to remove some inner washers to center uh, the arm of the brake adjuster into the center of the yoke. Then the next thing you do is you get your 7 16 wrench out or in this case a ratchet, turn it clockwise and uh, move the adjuster until the clevis pinhole of the adjuster lines up with the clevis yoke. Okay, as the video shows, now what you do is you turn the adjuster uh, clockwise until the arm of the adjuster lines up with the clevis yoke. You take the uh, clevis pin, apply never seize to the clevis pin, then you will go ahead and insert it into the hole for the yoke and the adjuster. Then you find the uh, hole in the clevis pin, put your cotter pin in through the uh, clevis pin that holds it into place and then you bend both legs of the cotter pin and now your adjuster is secured. The next thing you will do is then you push the control arm towards the actuator and in this case we are pushing it in a counterclockwise position. You do it until it goes to the end of the smiley 
bracket or the end of its slot. Then you go ahead and insert your flat pin. Okay, to finish the installation of the anchor stud pin, what you do then is pull it back through the smiley bracket and you put the uh, flange nut tor and torque it to its proper spec. And in the torque sequence, uh, you verify that when you tighten the nut, that the uh, control arm stays in its proper position and the proper torque value for that nut is 40 to 50 foot-pounds. Then no matter uh, what position the adjuster is in, whether it's on the steer axle, the drive axle, or the trailer axle, you have to always manually adjust the adjuster to get it close. And the way you do it is you use your 7 16 wrench, turn it clockwise the easy way until the lining contacts the drum and you back it off one half of a turn. Now, uh, as the video shows, you turn it clockwise and as you turn it, you'll see the friction hits the drum and then you back it off one half of turn after the lining just touches the drum and you'll hear a real loud ratchet. For more information, please contact Haldex.com.